and we're in the anti-spyware security profile. And we're going to open up the strict profile. Now these two predefined ones you cannot edit, but I'm going to just show you the contents of them and we would clone it in the production environment and make any tweaks or edits we needed to. But just for seeing the settings, we're going to go in here and edit or view the strict. So this is where you're going to configure sinkhole exactly and right. DNS protection. Exactly right. So these, these security rules here, uh, these anti-spyware rules here apply just to the anti-spyware signatures. But something that I think is kind of hidden, it's not intended to be hidden, but most people don't discover it, is this DNS signatures tab here. So it is hidden a bit inside of the anti-spyware profile. And what's new is this section right here, Palo Alto Networks DNS Security. This Palo Alto Networks network content DNS signatures has been there in older versions of PanOS. And as you said, those signatures get updated with uh, the antivirus package every 24 hours. But the firewall can only hold 100,000 signatures. And that's not enough for all the different DNS domains out there. So what the DNS uh, security feature does is as a DNS request comes in, he'll compare it to first this list, and then he'll also send a copy up to the DNS security cloud servers, and then get a response back and say if a domain being requested is malicious or not. And if it is malicious, then that DNS request will get sync hold using this address here. So sync hold at paloaltonetworks.com. Previously, it was just a, an IP address. But the drawback there is malware could blacklist that IP address. So using a domain name here, we can change what address that translates to at whatever interval is necessary. So just to be clear, that what's new in 9.0 is that additional signature source DNS security. Correct. Right, so it's in the cloud. We're extending and expanding our DNS uh, protection. Yeah, because as uh, you guys will see, Martin's going to tell us there's so many domains out there that just keeping track of that, they might get stood up for five minutes. You know, so we need to be able to detect that and block traffic to those malicious domains, especially when they're using things like domain generation algorithms and stuff like that. Because of the, the potential for, for false positives here, this behaves a little bit more like PanDB. We've even got an exceptions tab here. So if we flag a domain that you do legitimately use as malicious, if it truly is malicious, it might be, but you need to get to it for you know threat research purposes or whatever, you can create exceptions here to make it so that those will resolve back to the normal domain. That's great, that's great. So going back to what we talked about earlier, you're going to create a security policy rule and you're going to attach an anti-spyware profile, but you have the added capability to reference uh, that DNS security source for your signatures, for your signature source. Exactly right. And then the second rule that you said we should create to block traffic to that sinkhole, again, it uses sinkhole.paloaltonetworks.com. So come up here to the addresses section, create an FQDN or fully qualified domain name address object so that that resolves to whatever the IP address uh, we're sinkholing you to and then reference that in your security rule as a destination address. So you've got um, just enhanced protection as far as responding to malicious domains that get propped up. So in short order, we can detect those uh, in a faster fashion. Absolutely. And you also can locate your infected clients. Traffic log. Bonus.